uh, we're talking about taxes and government, and then we're going to go to Laura Livengood and see if we have any questions in the audience. I think we have lots. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. It, so the government, the GOP just passed this massive tax bill. Um, you are you want to bring back that fiscal conservatism? Let's talk about corporations. One of the big things about the Republican Party is you know low taxes on corporations. What do you think we should do there? Well, first of all, I think the tax bill needs to be reversed as soon as we can uh, accomplish that. Um, whenever it comes to corporate taxes, we, we always hear this talking point about how the United States has one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world and all this, but they never really talk about the fact that our effective tax rate on the corporations was around 20%, and some of the largest ones would shelter so much money um, overseas, and I believe in 2014 we lost 90 billion dollars in tax revenue because of overseas tax havens. Wow! Um, so you know, if we would recoup that money, we'd be able to do much, much more with our economy. And and here's the funny thing about tax cuts: um, the whole notion that trickle down economics is is viable is completely wrong. There has never been a society that has actually functioned on the trickle down principle. Um, that did not have rampant inequality. It just simply does not work. Uh, Nick Hanauer, um, if, if you've heard of him, is actually, a, sure. I believe he was, one of the, he was one of the first investors in Amazon. He's, he's a venture capitalist, and he was uh, quintessential to getting the $15 minimum wage passed in Seattle. I have actually uh, watched a lot of his talks and read a lot of his articles, and he raises a lot of really, really good points. Um, you know, cutting taxes, one of the reasons that the GOP uses to cut taxes is they say it's going to create jobs, but it, it never creates jobs. They take that money, they give it to their CEOs, they give it to the shareholders, and the people that work for them never, ever see it. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of twofold uh, whenever we look at it. It's, it's not just the tax cut, or in this case, um, an elevation in taxes. Although I, I honestly don't feel that we need to raise taxes above where they were previously uh, or prior to the tax cuts that were recently passed. Mm -hmm. I believe we just need to enforce our tax code, and that would, uh, that would help our economy tremendously. Okay, that's fair enough. So we put them back around 35%, but we actually stopped subsidizing the fossil fuel industry and not letting them use loopholes because the fossil fuel industry gets paid like three times by us. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous how much money they make, and we, we're all of it. There's nothing back from them. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. So you don't think we need to go up to the old where, where the Republicans had it in the 50s, where it was up to 70, 80, 90 percent up there? No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, and, and I know the 90 percent. I believe it well, wasn't Eisenhower that had it. Yes. 90 yes. percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that that's that's deceptive. It, it sounds you know horrible, but it's 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 tiered. So I, sure. I don't know the tax brackets, but, you know, some people may not know if they make 10 million dollars, maybe only the last 50,000 is going to be taxed at 90 percent. Um, I know that was to pay, I believe, for a lot of the, the military expenditures from the war and everything. Um, so it may be necessary then. That may be a little too high, in my opinion. Um, the the <laughs> way I've seen it is simply that if, if we actually enforce the tax codes, get rid of the loopholes, and bring in the money that we should already be getting. Uh, Verizon Wireless, perfect example. One of the biggest telecom industries in the world, they paid less percentage in taxes in 2015 than I did. I right. believe they got a tax return. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that is ludicrous. It is absolutely yes. ludicrous. You and I both paid more in taxes than Verizon. Yes. I don't have my money. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't have any millions. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm right with you on there. Laura Livengood, questions yes. from the audience. What do we have? Yes. I waited a long we've time. A, we, yeah, we've got a few questions. Um, a lot of people really liking what you're saying, saying we never heard a Republican sound like this. And this wow. question about um, if elected, with whom would you caucus? The Democrats or the Republicans or independents or, or what would your strategy be? Yeah, that's one I've been I've been asked um, actually a, a few times. That, that's a really, really big question. And it, and it depends largely upon who gets elected. Um, mm -hmm. if, if enough of my independent Republican friends who are, who are running now, I'm aware of eight different ones across the country. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, if, if enough get in, caucus with the Republicans. Um, absolutely. Uh, now, as far as independents, I believe we only have one independent in Congress. And, or excuse me, well, it's actually in Senate. It's uh, Bernie Sanders. So oh, yeah. I, and he, and he <laughs> right. Yeah. With, with the Democrats. So you can hang exactly. out with Bernie. That's yeah, cool. exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I would, 
I would probably stick with my party because I think that a lot of them need to to kind of get a different perspective on on things because they seem to be pretty tone deaf on a lot of things. And I, you, you know, I think largely it's, it's due to the corruption. And I'm hoping that I can lead them back to the light uh, to actually help the constituents out. I love that. I was just going to say, lead by example. Go show them that there yes. are Republicans who can have values that they used to have. Do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, awesome. Uh, th good answer. Laura Live and Good, mm -hmm. other questions? Yes, uh, more questions. Um, what do you think about Social Security? Do you have a traditional Republican view that it should be um, gotten rid of, or would you support it? Oh, well, uh, whenever you use the term traditional, I, I, I don't yes. know how far back they go. <laughs> that's but, true. That's uh, true. That's, that's not true. fair to say. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, uh, Social Security is the most popular program in America, period. Uh, the, the most popular federal program, excuse me. Um, so I approve of it personally. And as a, an elected official, which I hope to be, I would be remiss to actually go against something that, uh, what was it, 92% of Americans approve of Social Security. And I believe somewhere, uh, don't quote me on this one, I'm not positive, but somewhere in the 70% range uh, or mid to upper 60s actually want it increased. So I approve completely of Social Security. It, you know, we cannot privatize retirement like a lot of people want to do. Uh, people that receive money from Wall Street want to privatize it. They they see right. those those pensions and the Social Security money and they salivate because right now I believe we have about two point seven trillion dollar surplus um, in our Social Security funds. Um, so you know, private industry would really like to get their hands on that. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think we need to gamble with. Uh, our depositors' money, which is taxpayers' money, because a perfect example of what might happen is the 2008 crash. So Social Security needs to be maintained. Absolutely, I agree with the majority of Americans on that. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah, we don't need a repeat of borrowing from Social Security. That was a Reagan mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that yeah, answer.